the old workbench. Hi, well it's been about three weeks, uh, three, four weeks. I've had a little vacation time, a little downtime. Did the Maker Faire in Burlington. That was a lot of fun. Good job putting that on you guys. And this week we're going to get started with uh, another new project, uh, another motorcycle project, kind of like the one I did before in the Triumph. Uh, the carburetor had problems. This one's a 2007 Yamaha Virago. A little bit newer bike, obviously, and it's got some extra little bells and whistles added to it here and there. has a little problem with starting up and being able to take revs right away. It has to sit and idle for 20 minutes or more. I did a little digging on the forums uh, on the internet, which is a good place to get information on uh, things mechanical, as most of you know. And I found this is a common issue. Uh, it tends to be dirt in the carburetor, idle jets, things like that. So we're going to head on over to Lisa's house. We are going to tear into her bike, got to pull uh, the gas tank off, the carburetor off, then we're going to get in there and see what's making this thing dirty. So, come on, let's, let's head on over to Lisa's. Here we go. Alright, I already got the other seat bolt off. This is a 10 millimeter. Bolt out of there. And then we can lift the seat up out of the way. Pretty easy one on this. And once we've got that done, you can see the battery is right there under the seat, as it does on most motorcycles. So we're going to get a charger connected to that and leave it hooked up while we're doing this other work. And then hopefully by the time I'm done with that, it'll be charged back up and ready to uh, start it back up. Okay, let's get the uh, tank next. I don't have a workshop manual on this, but you know, pretty good at figuring stuff out. On this side of the tank is this device with some hoses running into it. And it looks to me like that's a vacuum diaphragm of sorts. And what I'm thinking this is is a fuel cutoff. It stops the fuel flow going to the carburetors until the engine is actually running and it's pulling a vacuum on this diaphragm and opening a valve. At any rate, all of these hoses have to come off from this. And on the other side, we have Right here, the fuel valve uh, prime lets it bypass that valve on the other side and run directly into the carburetors to get some fuel in there quickly when you're starting it up. The reserve, of course, is in the lower part of the tank. It gives you a little bit of reserve. If you uh, run out of gas, you flip it to reserve and you can get to a fueling station. There's also on, which is here. And um, we're going to just leave this on, I think, the on position, which I hope will close off the, uh, the fuel coming out uh, here, I think. When I pull the tank, I won't have fuel running everywhere. So I've got to find all of these hoses on this side, and there's one here in the tank, and a few others. They've all got to come off first. And if any gas flows out of those, I need to block them off somehow, and then I can get the tank off, and we can get at the carburetor. All right, all the lines are disconnected. I disconnected this because it stays with the carbs. That just makes it a few less lines to pull off right now. And there was a few over on this side to take off and you slide it back and the tank comes off. Just about the same on any motorcycle. Okay, here's what we got. We got a single carburetor with its own float bowl uh, somewhere right here. Hard to see. But anyway, it's just a single carb and it splits off into these two cylinders through the manifold right there. You can see how it goes left and right. It goes up to a single neck. So we've got to take this carburetor all the way off. Wow, that was a bit tricky. It's a pretty tight squeeze taking this thing out of there. There's this given amount of room between the intake and uh, the place where it picks up the uh, air cleaner box. Pretty tight. So anyway, here's the carb, woo woo, spilling a little gas, uh, with the cables still connected. So this is the, the throttle cables. These are like a push-pull arrangement, so it's kind of a safety thing. When you let it off the throttle, it actually pulls the throttle closed. And then the other cable going here is the choke cable. And what that does is just restrict some flow going into the carburetor and make the mixture richer when you start it up. So we'll get the cables disconnected now, get all this nasty gas drained out of there. And Start taking this apart. According to the Yamaha owner's manual, the carburetor is an important part of the engine and it's an emission control system which requires very sophisticated adjustment. 
Sophisticated. Therefore, carburetor adjustments should be left to Yamaha dealer, who has the necessary professional knowledge and experience. Or Dino on Hack a Week. <laughs> Sophisticated adjustments. That one kind of cracks me up. Do I need to go get my tuxedo before I start taking this apart? Yep. And so maybe a martini or something? Okay. Here we go. Let's tear this apart. Shake it. Don't stir it. I'm suspecting this might have something to do with the float level because Lisa said that the carburetor was overflowing to the point where it was actually running out of the air cleaner box, which is really, really bad. That's a lot of flooding. So I'm going to pull off the float bowl, which is right here. I got some funny marks on the bottom of this. I don't know what happened or who, why, but... There's kind of some weird marks on the bottom of this right there. I don't know if they really will show up. Where am I? On camera much, but see that? It kind of looks like somebody's been hitting it with a hammer. Hmm, I never do that. Okay, let's get the rest of this off. A couple more screws. There's a float inside here, just like on that other video, that moves up and down with the level of the gas and either opens or closes a valve in relation to the height of the fuel in there. And there it is right there. There's the float. And right here is the little valve that opens and closes with the float that's called the needle seat valve. So we're going to check to make sure that that's actually doing its thing right. This is the main jet. Um, that could be dirty, clogged up. So we'll check to see what's going on with that. All these passages for fuel need to be nice and clean. That one is the idle jet right there. And we gotta check that too. Okay, let's keep going. Unscrew the jets next. The needle and seat looks okay. It's opening and closing the way it's supposed to. I don't think it's so much of a fuel delivery problem through the, the needle valve as much as it is through the idle circuit or the main jet or something. Something is clogging up in here. It could also be these any one of these other two little things here, these two sensors that I really don't know what they do. Um, I'll bet somebody watching this video does, who does motorcycle tech work full time. Uh, but I just I don't have any kind of information on this at all, so I'm just kind of winging it as I go here. This is the idle jet, and it should have a little hole going through it, lengthwise, this way, which lets the fuel flow through these holes right here. And guess what? When I blow on this, nothing comes out. So I, uh, I'm pretty sure there should be a hole through there. So we're going to get a little piece of fine wire and see if we can run it through there and open this up. Oh, and it's got holes in it. So I've got some stranded wire here. It's going to take some small wire to get through that. It's probably a really tiny hole. So Let's see if I can get one of these strands to poke through first and uh, clean out whatever kind of schmutz is in there. Yep, there it goes. It's going through now. One piece goes through pretty easy, so to get the rest of the junk out, now I'll just take another piece of this wire and just twist it together with this one. Hopefully that's not going to be too big, but all these twists will kind of act like a like a corkscrew sort of thing and help clean out that hole. And of course a can of some carburetor cleaner or something squirted through there would help out a lot. If you have a compressor with you know an air hose and compressed air, that'll also help. We can almost get two, uh, two pieces to go through there, but not quite. Give it another try. Nope, I don't think it's going to make it. That, that hole is too small for two pieces of wire. So, we'll just go back to one piece of wire. And just uh, keep working it through there a little bit. Clean everything out.
Okay, time to clean this thing out with uh, some carburetor cleaner and a little spray can. Watch your eyeballs with this stuff. Kind of spray through every single jet and orifice where gas is going to go in this thing. And clean off all this old gas, old nasty stuff. We'll just give it a good rinse. Go through all the passageways. And once we get all the parts cleaned up, then we'll put everything back together. And hopefully that plugged up idle jet being cleaned out will solve our little problem when startup happens. I'm going to get a little bit of stuff through this jet now. The idle jet. Yep, it's clear now. Good. I just discovered something else that's a little bit plugged up in this. There's a hole right here in the bottom. Uh, this carburetor actually has an accelerator pump. That means when you, you know, move the accelerator on the handlebars, like in a car, in the old cars, you'd press on the gas pedal and it would squirt a little bit of gas directly down the barrel of the carburetor to help the engine accelerate. Well, it turns out that this little accelerator pump nozzle was clogged up, so I've cleaned it out. Now you can see when I squirt some uh, carburetor cleaner through it, you'll see. See that tiny little jet of stuff come out? That tiny little bit. That's what it needs. I'm having trouble. With I'm having a can fail moment here. There we go. You saw it there. That's what happens every time you hit the throttle. It squirts a little bit of gas in there. It helps it accelerate. Well, that wasn't happening. So that would make it not accelerate well. So that's two things we found that were wrong with this carburetor. Let's continue to get this back together and on the bike now. Okay, that pesky little carburetor is back on and it's better than it came off. Things are cleaned up. The tank has been drained of all the old fuel. We put some new fuel in and now we got the moment of truth. Go ahead and fire it up, Lisa. What's it gonna do, folks? Have the key on? I thought you were doing it. Come back. You want me to just... Hmm. It's on run. Try choking it. Give it a little choke. See if it'll go. Wow, that. that's way too That's actually pretty typical of the bike. Darn. Okay, I think I figured out something here. Go ahead and start it again. Okay, I think I know what's happening here. Those little things I was looking at down here that I was kind of wondering what they are. I think that those are temperature sensors and they're faulty because I disconnected both of them and all of a sudden it wants to rev okay, which was this thing's main problem is when it first started up, it didn't want to take revs very well. And if you let it set 20 minutes or more, then it was okay. So I got a feeling that the resistance value of these is not right. And there's a little computer connected to the uh, ignition control unit and that's changing the ignition timing. And by disconnecting those, I'm kind of faking it out, I think, and it's just going to a default setting of ignition timing, and then it runs okay. So I'm going to guess that that's what's going on, and we need to replace those. But we're definitely on the right track. It starts up now, and we'll take some revs. So this motorcycle will be soon back on the road and happy. And I think we'll do a follow-up video when we get those parts later. But for now, we're going to call this one done enough and move on to other things. So, until next time, what's the line? Keep on hacking!